Hi, friends, and welcome to Screen Vomit, the only movie podcast for normal people. I'm, of course, your host, Kayla. Here with me is my twin, Kali J. Quack, quack, babies. It's Kali J. We are also today joined by a king. Our guest today is a literal doctor of astronomy. What? They've done TED Talks. They're involved with social justice activism, which rocks. When I met them, they were rocking in a damn band called Ditch Club. And that will be my pal, Lucianne Walkowicz. Hey! Yay! Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> was that an okay intro? Welcome to the pod, Lucianne. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That was a great intro. Okay, Thank cool. you. It's so cool to be here. No, we're honored. <laughs> Tell us about your new little sketch show that you're doing, your little space oh, show. Yeah. Um, you know, every day I get up and I do my silly little space show. <laughs> um, yeah, so... <laughs> I work at the Adler Planetarium uh-huh. in here in Chicago, and um, so like a lot of museums, like we have been closed basically since oh, since last yeah. March or the March we are currently in, depending on um, whether you think it's still March <laughs> or not. And <laughs> um, yeah, there's a there's a website of eternal oh. yeah eternalmarch dot com, and you can see what month of March it is. Um, oh. Shit. Yeah, so we closed and, you know, we had like some online programming, but not a ton of stuff. And we also went through a really like traumatic and terrible round of layoffs where we lost 60% of our staff. Oh, geez. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of the the remnants of those of us um, like myself who worked on, uh, you know, Adler when we were open had this 21 and up night called Adler After Dark. It was basically like a big space party and there was like spacey content, but then also like dancing and fun. you're saying you're a professional partier. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, so oh, yeah. now that it's the year where we say things like, now it's unsafe to party, uh, yeah. we, oh my gosh. we wanted to look kind of like take the spirit of that and do something else with it. Yeah. Because there's been a lot of like work to put events on on like Zoom or do virtual stuff. And yeah. like some of them are pretty good, but mostly it's just not the same thing. Totally. Right. Um, but a lot of the folks that worked on Adler After Dark who were left after layoffs have like performance sides to their lives. And uh-huh. so a bunch of us got together and you know, basically came up with this idea to do something that kind of captured that creative spirit. So we started a couple new things. One is uh, the show that you asked about, The Wow Signal, which is a YouTube show that's kind of like maybe a mixture of space science and sketch comedy and a 90s sitcom. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like a drop of Bill Nye and a drop of musical stuff going on. Yeah. And like a a dash of perfect strangers. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And the premise of it is that like during current, when like the city locks down myself and my coworkers, Meredith and Chris, have to uh, live at the planetarium for some reason we never explain. Um, and while we are quarantined at the planetarium, we receive a mystery signal, the wow signal from space. Uh-huh. And so it's all about trying to figure out what that is. And I don't want to tell you too much else because it'll spoil it. Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that's on YouTube, so everybody can watch it on YouTube. Hell yeah, we have two episodes out now. Um, it's kind of got like a Pee Wee's Playhouse vibe where like it's definitely yes. for adults, but it's pretty family friendly. You know, like your children won't get the Tinder jokes, but <laughs> they also won't be traumatized by them. <laughs> um, they won't think that uh, the character yeah. of Chadler is quite as funny as like I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I literally die every time Chadler comes on, came on this. I so appreciate that. I feel like Ch- Chadler, you know, being in research, like I have friends who, you know, have wrote a book in the last year and, you know, like published a bunch of papers. And I'm like, I invented a character called Chad Adler. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just me in a wig. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> no, it rocks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. That's great. I wish that I had smarter questions to ask you about all the cool stuff that you do, but I'm literally a 
baby brain Dumbo. <laughs> but all questions are good yeah. questions, truly. Here's a question. Do you have any cool alien stories? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the closest thing to like a cool alien story that I have is that I went to Storm Area 51. Oh, you were part of that shit? <laughs> Yeah, I actually, so my research is on, like, life in the universe and trying to find it. Yeah, Um, okay. And I do a bunch of that stuff just, like, for my research. But I'm also, like, really interested in the fact that people are interested in aliens. Like, I think it's really interesting that, like, for some people, like me, for it's my job. Yeah. Um, and then, like, there's this broad swath. Like, most, most Americans, in fact, think that, you know, aliens exist somewhere yeah. um, and then like a smaller fraction of that think that aliens are visiting us and then like a very small fraction of that think aliens are like running the government and like, so wait, where do you stuff. stand on these issues <laughs> yeah I, i'm in the exist somewhere camp okay um, yeah, same so not in the government <laughs> no no i think those are just regular stupid <laughs> humans <Yeah. laughs> Some, somewhere on the like evil to to incompetent spectrum, yeah, but okay. not you know just humanly so. <laughs> so I went to Storm Area Fifty One because I was really interested in just like walking around and talking to people who had gone there. Um, yeah, because it was held in this tiny town in Nevada called Rachel that has I think fewer than a hundred residents and like no water, no like gas station or anything. Oh, wow. it really, really is like in kind of like the middle of the desert. Yeah. It just happens to be abutting this very famous, poorly kept secret Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty interesting. It was like a weird mix of like true believers and, you know, people who just kind of wanted to see what it was about and then like... Do the Naruto run? Wasn't that a thing? <laughs> Naruto run there, to Yeah, Area. there were a couple of people People doing I was actually disappointed as like a fan of Naruto. I was disappointed how few people were in Naruto clothes. <laughs> but I did see some Naruto running and that made okay, me cool. that rules. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> yes. And then weirdly, like a bunch of influencers too, or like people who would like oh, to I'm be sure. influencers. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. But I met some really like great, I had some great conversations. I met a guy who lives in Bowman, South Carolina, named Jody Pendarvis, who cool made name. his house into a UFO welcome center, which you should look him up because he's, he's really great. Hell yeah. yeah. And very weird. And I love him. That feels like yeah. uh, the same crowd you'd see at the Gathering of the Juggalos. There's probably some overlap. <laughs> True believers, some people just there to witness it, some YouTube influencers. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> Juggalos are probably more prepared for the outdoors. <laughs> 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 like, really, like, I cannot convey to you how out there Rachel is. It's, like, not a, not a super far drive. It's, like, a two, two and a half hour drive from Las Vegas. So it's not, like, far, it's far. far. But, you know, like, I woke yeah, and I, like, woke up one day to, like, hear some guy being like, holy shit, a rattlesnake just crawled through my tent. He was just, like, in a hole under the tent, and then he crawled through the tent. And <laughs> oh I was like, God. yeah, you're in the middle of the desert, <laughs> sleeping on the ground. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did y'all know there's animals outside? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It's kind of fucked up. They just live out here, man. It's weird. (laughs) Oh, my God. Hell, yeah. So you used to have a, for a a small amount of time anyway, you were doing a space movie watch along thing, right? Do you have a do you have a favorite space movie? Yeah. Ooh, I have a lot of favorite space movies. I know that's not really how favorites are supposed to work. No, no, no. You got a you got a top three. Yeah. um, As sort of like a classic sort of pretty um, like. The movie version of a good vanilla ice cream, (laughs) I would say Arrival is a favorite. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a a cool update to Contact, which is another favorite. But if we're if we're staying with the like podcast rules of past 10 years, um, it can be whenever. Just for for this purposes, it can be whenever. (laughs) Okay. Just curious. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But also like Attack the Block is a a really great one. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Never heard of that one. I love Attack the Block. It's so good. It's it's just delightful. I think it just fell out of our 10 year range. Uh, Such a shame. But it is such a baller movie. Huh. Yeah, Attack the Block, um, the movie we will talk about today is also a big one. Um, but I would say besides that... This movie that we're doing today is a fave for you? Yes, oh. I really I really like this movie. Cool. That 
I can understand. Yeah. yeah. But I would also say Annihilation is another really Fuck like yeah. interesting yeah. alien space movie of recent years. It's not like a fantastic movie. Like, a, you know, it's not like I feel like a great work of cinema, but I really enjoyed it. And the bear that screams is a fucking scary I'll never image. forget it. Yeah. I'll never forget yeah. that. But it's the scariest yeah. thing I've ever yeah. seen. It's a slam dunk. <laughs> No, that movie's incredible. Yeah, hell, hell yeah. yeah. So getting into the movie we picked today, I picked this movie. We did the 2013 movie Under the Skin. So I had never seen this movie before, but Lucien, obviously you said you had. Did you see it in theaters or like just watch it at home or do you remember? Uh, I watched it at home a couple of years ago, I think, mm. and had not heard about it. Um, but my partner, Frank, who was on the show as well, yes, they introduced me to this movie because they really love it. And I love it, too. I had just been like, I'm in all these like Hell movie yeah. groups on Facebook or whatever. It sounds so lame to say That's, out loud, but um, <laughs> I just watch lame. people talk about movies that are good all the time. I don't even really participate that much, but uh, and I'll just be adding stuff to my list. But this movie comes up all the time in those groups of people just being like, whatever, this movie rocks or has cool visuals or whatever. So I just feel like I, I see this movie mentioned yeah. in there like once or twice a week. So I was like, I've had this on my list for a couple months now. So I'm excited to finally do this <laughs> i don't know why there was such a pause <laughs> i'm like um english words uh so colin had you seen it before or no no okay, cool. i uh had seen it on every letterboxed list yeah. that's like great movies best movies favorite movies like anything yeah about like the past great movies of the past 10 years this movie is always on that list i had just seen the cover i had no fucking... I did not read a synopsis mm, That's good. anything. Yeah, that's cool. I had no idea what I was walking into. And I tell you what, I had the wrong idea about this movie the whole time. Yeah, I was, was great. I was wondering. <laughs> we'll get into that, but I was really curious because I accidentally had spoiled some of it for myself. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get into that yeah. here in a minute. All right, so I, I'm going to run through the... Well, there's not much cast, really, but written and directed by Jonathan Glazer, most famously known for directing the virtual insanity Jamiroquai music video. <laughs> <laughs> I could not believe it. When I, when I, I looked at wow. this director, I'm like, Jonathan Glazer, I know that name, right? <laughs> and I'm like, nope, I don't, because I never watched that Jamiroquai music video. <laughs> you had to have seen that video. It's like the most famous music video of all time, probably. <laughs> I bet if y'all pulled it up, you'd be like, oh, okay, I've seen this. It's like the room is spinning. He's like walking up the different walls. I bet you've seen it and you just don't remember. Um, all right, just running through the rest of this real fast. Obviously, we have Scarlett Johansson uh, needs no introduction. Most of the actors in this movie have never been in anything else. And that was an intentional thing. And we'll get into that later. I do also want to mention, speaking of the music, Mika Levy. From the band Mikachu and the Shapes did the soundtrack for this oh. movie. And um, it's still weirdly rare for women to score films. So she deserves an extra honorable mention. But she also did win a bunch of awards for her score for this movie. So deservedly. Mika Levy. Yeah, I love the score for this movie. It reminds oh, yeah, me of I did like, too. Hitchcock movies. I thought, yeah, the score was really sick. Absolutely. Um, all right, Kali, tell us the critic scores. Cricket scores with Rotten Tomatoes. 85%. That's a good score you can take home to Mama. <laughs> Meta Cricket, 80%. That's still, Mama's going to be, yeah, she's not that happy. <laughs> and I tell you what, Google users, 63%. You know, I think that's a failing that's, grade. That's an F. That's an F. Mama's not happy. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Like, I get here. I love this movie. Yeah. But I totally understand if someone were like, I fucking hated that movie. The reviews are pretty divisive, really. Like, it's either people are like, I don't get it. This is the worst movie ever. Or people are like, you're dumb because you don't get it. <laughs> kind of. It's like <laughs> one, of the, right. one of those. <laughs> I won't even, I don't even think you're dumb if you don't get it. Cause like, I agree. The standard, the standard, per, like a normie, normiest normie, I think of my mom. And I'm like, if my mom watched this, would she get it? And I'm like, no, but my mom's not dumb. She's just plain. She's just very simple. So brutal. I love my mom, but like my mom doesn't, my mom loves golf, tennis, and work. And her, her dog is very sweet too. 
<laughs> I love my mom. That tracks. So we should watch the trailer and then we'll get into it. So you live alone? Yes. You think I'm pretty? I like a gorgeous. Come to me. Last time you touched someone. That's a damn fine trailer. It is mm. a damn fine trailer. Um, for the audio, <laughs> for the podcast listeners, I feel like it doesn't give you much. Because <laughs> this movie is all great. sounds There's and a visuals. Noise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just for a very quick synopsis, just for the listeners. A seductive alien prowls the streets of Glasgow in search of prey, unsuspecting men who fall under her spell. Wow, that's interesting that they actually say that there's an alien in the... In the synopsis? Because I rewatched it for this, and mm-hmm. it uh, the synopsis starts with a voluptuous woman. And I was like, well, <laughs> are they just trying to get people to watch this weird cerebral <laughs> alien movie? <laughs> look, huh. if you're going... Look, if you want to find a way to get someone to watch your weird cerebral alien movie making scarlett johansson naked for i don't know 10 percent of it <laughs> is a pretty like smart way to do it yep yeah sure this was her first nude role too so this it was oh, like a oh. breaking news <laughs> <laughs> that was um i alluded earlier that i had spoiled some of it for myself and i feel like that's what was spoiled was that i already knew she was an alien going into this movie which i feel like there are hints of like she's something else throughout the movie, but you yeah. don't like really know mm-hmm. till the end, right? That she's an alien. I straight up thought she was a robot. Yeah. The entire yeah. movie. Roll credits. I open my, up my phone and I read the synopsis and see alien, and I'm like, a what? <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't really change it. I I just thought she was a robot the whole That's time. That's why I was really curious, like, what your experience was, because I already knew going in that she was an alien. I would not want to know it's an alien. Yeah. Saying voluptuous woman isn't quite... <laughs> isn't I, it, quite you accurate. Can't, <laughs> yeah. You can't describe this movie, no. like, without spoiling it. Yeah, no, you can't. Yeah, it's interesting that you thought she was a robot. So this being my second watch, mm-hmm. I... So I definitely left the first watch being like, oh, she was an alien. And in Mm. the second watch, I was like watching the whole opening sequence. I was like, nobody has ever used visuals like this that have nothing to do with aliens. Yeah. (laughs) Like, like as soon as there's like a weird white tube floating in space, like some somebody's an alien. Yeah. Or in space or both. I don't know what drew me to robot. Probably just like her lack of emotion during so much of it. Yeah, Yeah. it was stuff like that. And then I've seen the artificial intelligence becoming self-aware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's done done so many times in movies. I was like, okay, this is another like, oh, what does it mean to be a person or have be the self? So, like, kind of a similar read. It really doesn't change a lot. Yeah. But I did watch, like, a video, like, a YouTube video uh, explanation of it. Just one guy's, like, opinion. Yeah. Which was really great. I I should find it. Love to get opinions uh, from the guys. Yeah. It was a good... (laughs) It was just, like, a fucking... I don't know. I appreciated it because it was, like... He pointed out (laughs) shit that was, like... And then we see the space, uh, like, something fly away. Yeah. And I'm, like... 
Oh, it was an alien. I I just the motherfuckers using weird visuals the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did not process all of them. All right, that's fair. I this didn't fair. understand most of them. This is like so. We recently did Beyond the Black Rainbow on the pot. Uh, Lucian, have you seen that movie? You know, that's one of those that I don't remember whether I've seen it or mm. not. I have a very bad memory for the totally fair because I do too, <laughs> and whether I have watched them. And I think I've yeah. probably seen it, but it's been a while. Okay, so we just did that for the pod, which is like kind of similar to this in that it is ninety percent visuals and vibes. And yeah. like ten percent actual narrative story, if even that high of a percentage. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just say that in comparison, I feel like this movie is maybe even more narratively ambiguous <laughs> and kind of expects the viewer to do a lot more of the work of interpreting what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Which might make it hard to talk about, but we'll see. So uh, I do have a lot of production notes, though. So uh, we ha- we'll have oh, something to talk about. I'm sure you do. About. Yeah. This movie was inspired by the novel of the same name by Michelle Faber. I don't know. I guess that's how you say that. About an alien who comes to Earth and gets surgery to look like a human and then picks up hitchhikers, drugs them, and sends them back to her planet where human meat is considered a delicacy. So it's only inspired by that novel. (laughs) The producer initially wrote a script that was closely adapted from the novel that uh, had all the bits of the novel in it. They were first developing a an elaborate, high-budget film about two aliens disguised as husband and wife farmers, and Brad Pitt was cast to be the husband. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Gimme, gimme. This movie was in the works for, like, almost a decade. It kind of seemed to, from everything I've read, it kind of seemed to, like, destroy Glazer. <laughs> <He's>, oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> he became, like, obsessed with it. He spent 10 <gasps> years, like, obsessively writing and rewriting the script, breaking it down, stripping things away, changing things. Uh, he eventually decided to make a film that represented an alien perspective that would focus Focus only on the female character and deleted every scene in the script that did not involve her and deleted the elaborate special effects sequences. And he said he wow. decided that he didn't want to film the book, but he wanted to make the book a film. So I don't know what that exactly okay. means. No, oh, okay. shut up. <laughs> you don't have to have an answer. I know. <laughs> He has some quotes about uh, basically saying that he feels like an alien. <laughs> and oh, so. <laughs> okay. I know. This is one of the suckiest and Oy. most rockin' guys I've ever heard of. I love hate him. <laughs> I love destroying yourself for art. Yeah. We love a space opera that eats its creator alive. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah. And like I said, he hasn't really done anything since this, and this was 2013, so I'm interested to know like where his like mental status is now. Oh, uh, boy. This is going to be a Not fun so. one. All right, so this is an A24 film, also should say. Love A24, obviously. The opening of this movie is strange. We have like an eyeball going on and somebody making like pronunciation noises like maybe they're learning the language or processing it as i called it Mm, they're uploading (laughs) uh we're in scotland oh yeah i (laughs) i had (laughs) they say that a lot once we get actual people talking later on definitely had to turn on the subtitles (laughs) the sexiest accent i mean wow wow we are i love it it's a it is the Scots, it's a good what an exit they have. It's, it's so fascinating. Like, how does your mouth make that happen? Uh, and the response. Oh, sorry. I, I got to hold back. <laughs> we'll get to the guys, Kali. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about the guys. <laughs> the first guy we see grabs a woman out of a ditch and throws her into a van. And he must be strong, too, because he just like straight up chucked that woman over his shoulder and is walking with yeah. ease. Yeah, sack of potatoes. Yeah. Also, none of the characters in this movie have names. They're all listed as the female, the bad man, the dead woman, first victim, etc. Oh, so that's an interesting choice. Well, I guess when he struck the script, he also struck all the names. Genius move. <laughs> yeah. Who need names? Yeah, Who we don't need them? names. <laughs> you know, names are just constructs. They're just names we give things. I don't, he doesn't like labels. <laughs> 
Scarlet puts on all of this girl's clothes and the girl sheds a single tear. And when she's doing that, this was also a scene that was reminiscent of Beyond the Black Rainbow. Sorry to bring it up again. There's a scene in Beyond the Black Rainbow that is all black and white, like high contrast, similar to the way that that scene looks when she's taking the clothes away. Yeah, so maybe- totally. Maybe in This was definitely a scene that I I had a lot of questions about. Like I feel like yeah. most of the movie in its opaque way like makes sense, but mm-hmm. I definitely like kind of like walking through a doorway and just immediately stumbling over the threshold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm always yeah. like they grew a whole human mm-hmm. or like a human suit, but then they had to go get the clothes from this dead girl. Yeah. Why didn't they just buy her, I don't know, or grow some clothes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I think has happened here, and none of this is explained, so that, that should just be said for the listeners out there. None of this is explained. But what I think is happening is this girl is like the former alien, and she has mm-hmm. turned how Scarlett Johansson turns at the end of the movie all emotional and doesn't want to be a alien seductress no more so she has already gone through that whole cycle and then they've taken her and they're about to take her back up to space scarlett johansson's incoming so she has to get clothes just for a second until she does go and buy clothes here in a minute but maybe just they like recycling i guess on their planet that's why they're so advanced (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they're like, buy clothes? You can get clothes anywhere, off of any dead person. Maybe they didn't have <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they didn't have money there's, at first? I don't know. <laughs> there's just clothes lying around in the ditches <laughs> next to your highways. <laughs> so after the clothes exchange, then we see the, it's a very quick shot of the UFO lights in the sky that are kind of above the clouds, so you can't even really see what's going on. Did not register anything. Yeah, I didn't register My little baby brain was smooth. (laughs) (laughs) I watched this twice, and the first time I watched it, I did not register that UFO, but the second time, I did. So which one of my brains is right? I don't know. We'll find out. (laughs) Then she goes to the mall, gets new clothes, gets makeup. 14 minutes in, we get the first bit of dialogue. So we've been 14 minutes with just vibes. (laughs) She's driving around in the van asking men for directions so now she's on the hunt we love it so all the men that she's stopping and talking to are being filmed by hidden cameras almost all of the cast of this movie were hidden camera people including the scenes at the mall it's all filmed by hidden cameras and then later when they're at the nightclub it's all filmed by hidden cameras everybody that's there they're not extras they're just people who happen to be there oh wow i guess scotland's laws are (laughs) different (laughs) the production team would hide in the back of the van they had hidden cameras all through the front she would just roll up and have unscripted combos with men (laughs) Did none of these dudes recognize no. Scarlett yeah. Johansson? They said that she very rarely got recognized because of... Wow. It's like a combination of her having oh short, my dark hair. God. She, that dark wig, because normally she's yeah, like blonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, secondly, you're just like not expecting to see Scarlett Johansson in the middle of Scotland. They're like in Nowheresville, Scotland, no. you know? <laughs> Well, and Scarlett Johansson seems like she wouldn't need directions, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you don't expect it. She (laughs) just wouldn't ask. Tiny little baby Scarlett Johansson with a black wig driving a gigantic van (laughs) in the middle of Scotland. Like, you just, (laughs) you would never expect that that's her. I feel like if I saw a normal celeb, I probably wouldn't expect that it was them too. Who did I just listen to? I was just listening to Natalie Portman on a podcast say that she never gets recognized when she goes outside because people don't expect her to be as tiny as she is because she's like five foot tall. And Scarlett Johansson is oh, also wow. 5'3". So I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. With these, there must have been some actors. Because we see... There were we see, there were a couple. We see Pipe. There were a couple actors. Okay. But also, after they would have like the conversation, and some of them got picked up, some of them didn't. But after the conversation was recorded, then the production team would have to like run after those guys and be like, uh, hey, we're actually going to use your footage in a movie. Will you sign this? permission slip or whatever okay yeah so they did have to get consent forms. they'd have to get consent forms and i think the language is tricky from what i've read online but it seems like some of the men who were picked up on hidden cameras were then talked to like hey you're already in the movie sign this little release but if you want to do something else show your little weenie and walk into a pool like then you can also do that (laughs) you're already here i would (laughs) 
literally a dream. Those <laughs> dudes literally got to live like the coolest, like the shit that you're like that kid at school says, like, "Oh, I fucked Kate Upton." Like, no, you didn't. Like, <laughs> you Scarlett did. Johansson lured me into a house and made me walk into a pool while looking at my dick. <laughs> You know, like everyone says in junior high. (laughs) Yeah, as far as I could tell, there were only like two actors in this whole movie, or two people with previous acting experience anyway. And the guy who drives a motorcycle is a professional motorcycle driver, but he's not like an actor. So if you count that, that would make three. Mm. So everybody's just a normal off the street. Glazer would talk to her through an earpiece and give her tips and instructions. And she said that occasionally he would just be like, hey, this guy looks good. Stop and talk to him. But sometimes it would be like some drunk friend or like somebody who looks insane. Yeah. And uh, so she also took some agency over picking who she actually talked to (laughs) to try and stay safe, which good for her. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, truly. So I think um, with that, you know, third aspect to this, just breaking it down, he broke down the script so hard, right? He nixed everything, nixed character names, and then also basically nixed the entire script and also (laughs) like didn't do casting. I know it's bad. <laughs> or work with like, like re- real cameras because everything was hidden cameras ugh. that were stationary, right? Like in the van and stuff. And not the entire movies in the van, but a lot of it is. It sets a bad precedent <laughs> that so many white dudes going insane over a movie make such great fucking movies. <laughs> I mean, I just think it's like, did this movie drive him insane to the point where like he basically canceled the entire movie, but then still made a movie, <laughs> canceled everything yeah. about a movie? <laughs> what a what a great, terrible guy, you know? Yeah, truly. <laughs> Pat in a punch. Just interesting. Uh... I don't know, methods. All right, so she's, she's picking up these guys. She's kind of sussing them out, trying to see who basically is unattached to the world, who doesn't have kids, <laughs> who doesn't have a wife, who doesn't have family nearby. And she brings one man to her house, the first victim, I guess you would say. When he goes inside, the world becomes like black nothingness, and he mm-hmm. follows her. They're both stripping, and then he is totally naked with a big old weenie and sinks into the water. Oh, and not that big. Well, he I just mean as uh, big as in erect. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a classic weenie. <laughs> just didn't want to say erect, but uh, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Yes. Don't love the word. <laughs> My ploy worked. <laughs> I got them to say it, everyone. <laughs> Now it's on record. It's on my permanent record. <laughs> Ready for someone to turn it into a sound bite that can be played oh again God. and again. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> That's pervert language. <laughs> So on the black room, I just have their ideas. They wanted to create the realm where the alien can be best shown without being tropey. So Mm. the only thing they ended up being comfortable and happy with was uh, an entirely black space. Like everything in the space is black. The black walls, black floor, everything's black. So they kind of define the space without defining it at all and kind of left it to your imagination (laughs) of like what's going on (laughs) yeah i thought the all like black room was excellent especially because like you get like a little glimpse of scarjo's real form totally it's so hard to show the alien without it being ridiculous right yeah yeah and that was kind of what they were saying too like they didn't want it to be tropey or like super sci-fi weirdo stuff or cgi or anything so that was like the best way to achieve that and it's inspired later things as well like they use that same kind of room in stranger things and in legion yeah definitely it's just an effective use of, of setting to completely remove setting yeah i mean the scariest thing is something you don't see yeah but not if you're hoping to have sex with scarlett johansson <laughs> then you will oh just strip <laughs> down and walk right into that room <laughs> These men are so entranced by her that they don't Truly. realize they are dying. Look, I get it. I'm not even like, like, I just think Scarlett Johansson is just conventionally beautiful. Mm-hmm. She's not like, we don't have to one roast of my, her. Like, 
I'm not roasting her. I'm just saying in my taste. But like, she's one of those people that you're like, oh yeah, gorgeous. Like what? Like Scott mm-hmm. Steiner, a genetic freak. <laughs> I can't believe you said That's that. all I got. Golly. <laughs> Do you know who Scott Steiner is, Lulu? I don't He's think a wrestler. So. Uh, <laughs> Just okay. a, in, one of the most insane looking and sounding people. He always has the most unhinged promos. And like that was his thing was he was <laughs> the genetic freak. <laughs> Which oh my god. Scarjo kind of is. So like it is a totally logically sound movie. Plus, like, men are dum-dums. <laughs> and, like, especially, especially when they're horny. when they have that... Yeah, say that word again, <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> when they have an... Er- 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 what? I refuse. <laughs> ah. <laughs> when, they go- when, the- when they got boy yo yoing yeah. they, like, build... <laughs> they're dumb. Like, real dumb. Yeah, so true. I kind of feel bad for ScarJo sometimes that, like, she's always cast in these roles and even just, like, the way she's talked about is so reductive to her appearance. Like, she's only just, like, the hot girl everybody wants to fuck, which I guess, hey, if you can just make money off of selling your image to horny dudes, then go for it. But But I think this, like, I could understand how, like, this movie would be intensely hard to grapple with from Scarlett Johansson's perspective. because This like, was the same year as her, too. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's such oh. an odd, like... One-two punch. <laughs> uh, that had to play like a weird games on her head. <laughs> two, two movies about guys who just want to fuck me. <laughs> yeah, that literally don't care if you're human. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly. In both cases. God. Oh, my God, weird. <laughs> Ugh, we rock so hard. We're dumb. <laughs> We're so dumb. <laughs> you know, more notably, I, I watched this and I was like, man, men really don't need to have any defense mechanisms, do they? <laughs> no, yeah. Not a one. Like all Not of these, these dudes were just like, yeah, big old van person asking me for directions, chatting me up. Must be about to get laid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not I was... killed. <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. Like when fucking the first guy like starts to get in the van, I was going like, absolutely. That's a smart thing to do. <laughs> like, I'm, I know this movie has like ulterior motives, but I knew like, take me back three years and I would have gotten in that van. Yeah. No. If a woman drove, if a gorgeous woman drove by and was like, hello, I need to give you a ride up the street, I'd be like, yes, hello, I have no self esteem. <laughs> now I'm better. I'm fixed now. But yeah, it is like, you can think about like, you know, if it were women, like we're trained to like walk down the street and be aware of everything and everyone around us at all times. Yeah. Let alone if a van pulled up next to you, you would probably scream and call 911 instantly. (laughs) Which is why, which is why Lindsay's response to it was, was like, oh, he's dead. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like she was like, if you get in someone's van that you don't know, you die. That's yeah, like automatically. How I live. Yeah. You get silence of the lamb. There you go. <laughs> and they did. The, they later <laughs> ate their guts like fava beans or whatever. <laughs> yeah. The skin is still there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that one. Okay, so next she goes to the beach and meets the diver guy. This scene's fucked. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Super fucked up. So there's like a couple that's further down the beach and the, like the woman starts drowning and then the man gets in to try and save Ugh. her and well, then the it's even worse what's what why is she out there why is she out there drowning i couldn't tell what else was in the water was it a, a dog oh okay i couldn't tell what else was in the water it looked like something but i couldn't tell what it was yeah so the dog ran out got caught up in the waves so she went out and got caught up in the waves and then he goes after her and gets caught up in the waves. And then the diver goes after all of them. And it sounds funny when you say it, does. it like back to back to back. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you should have the Benny Hill music yeah, playing. It is, in fact, uh, a scene of sheer dread. Yeah, and it's long. I mean, it's like it, it's not just boom, boom, boom. Like it's stretched out over like several minutes. That's probably a 10, 15 minute scene. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know time wise, but yeah, it's it's not it's yeah. not boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It, it You sit with these feelings for a minute and like why? Watching it all go down. Like, this movie is very, like, you're living life almost in real time with the character. Like, you're just Mm. going Mm -hmm. along on her day. So, like, everything is paced similarly to that, to that feeling. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Running those errands. Yeah. 
running those errands, <laughs> driving around, chilling on the beach, watching three people drown. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're really chilling in every scene. So the diver is the last guy in, and he does pull the man out, but the man is so desperate to get his wife that he just goes right back in and dies. <laughs> and uh, oh. the diver himself even barely Fuck. makes it out, and she... Gives him a little bop on the head with a rock. I started tearing up at this point. I I was just like... It was really like heart-wrenching. And then the cherry on top, once they zoom out a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. The baby is crying on the beach. Baby just sitting there crying alone because now both his parents are dead. And that was... (laughs) (laughs) Moment of silence for the baby. (laughs) So so heavy. You just realize, like, that baby's going to be eaten, drowned, or starved. Yeah, or something. Unless he becomes, like, wolf boy or something. (laughs) Raised by a pack of wolves. (laughs) Hey, it could happen. (laughs) It could happen. It could not. Human babies are, like... It's Haven't you ever watched the Discovery Channel? (laughs) Obviously. No. I've never watched it. (laughs) Haven't you ever heard about the founding of Rome? It happens all the time. (laughs) So they really milk oh, that boy. little baby being left alone on the beach, and she doesn't do anything to uh, help him out either. She just Walks. bops the guy and pieces out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. She doesn't take the man, right? The biker comes back and gets the man. Yeah. Yeah. So he comes up and scoops the diver and cleans up the campsite. And ices out that baby. Does he ice the baby? I thought he leaves the baby there. I'm, no. no. I meant like coldly ignores oh. this oh, crying okay. baby. <laughs> not <laughs> like you meant iced like you know. gangster, like I iced him. <laughs> no, not yeah. like leaves the baby to sleep with the fishes. <laughs> yeah, it just leaves the baby chilling and screaming. The baby is the screaming. The baby probably did end up sleeping literally sleeping with the fishes. Yeah. That's probably when true. It, when, probably once true. the tide came in. R.I.P. baby. R.I.P. baby, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it seems like the biker guy is kind of her cleanup crew to make it look like she didn't murder guys. Yeah. <laughs> to keep the keep people I, off her trail. My baby brain conceived this as a corporation that was killing and using men's bodies for some reason. And I think that's like, it's not too far off, just aliens instead. Like, this man does seem like he has some kind of a job, you know, like he is her boss maybe, or like handler or something. Yeah, something like that. (laughs) And and yeah, that they're sent here like with a specific duty, Uh, just not robots. Duty. (laughs) Don't say duty over there. So then she gets back in the van, driving around again. Uh, how much gas is she using? I don't know. It seems like vans take up a lot yeah. of gas, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Think about the earth for once. <laughs> she recycles clothes off of oh, dead yeah. people, Kayla. She cares about the environment. Yeah, she does her part. She can use as much as she wants. So yeah, she's driving around looking for guys. She ends up at the club next. And it's, like I said, a real oh, yeah. nightclub on a Friday night, just bopping full of people. Not a lot of things make me appreciate quarantine anymore (laughs) but seeing this club this scottish club Mm -hmm. i would hate it can you imagine the sounds those people are making Uh, i loved the sound of darude sandstorm (laughs) it was sandstorm (laughs) which was an incredible scotland has one song (laughs) one techno song at the club that song totally took me out of everything. <laughs> oh, God. Like, why are they playing this song here? The last song you hear before you die. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. <laughs> so, yeah, she finds a guy in the club. They go to her house to the black room as well. And here's a fun production fact. The location of the house that she takes this man to was shot in the Robert Street area of Port Glasgow, and filming had to be delayed for several days because there was a real-life murder on the next street, and the police had sanctioned the area off, so they couldn't access their filming location (laughs) because of a real murder. Yikes. (laughs) Insane. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) But anyway, she does murder that man. This is the first time that we see the underwater POV. Oh. Is it water? Well, or is it like an under goo situation? It's probably an under goo. It's more like an under jello. They never drown. <laughs> 
No. Under Jello. Because <laughs> like under Jello, they're not moving. They're like um, suspended. 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 Yeah. yeah. Jello is a good comparison. It's kind of it like really they're in is. a Jello mold. Yeah. Yeah. They can't really like go up, down, left, right. Can't really move arms to your sides or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. You also at the same time don't have to like kick to stay afloat or anything like that either. You're just kind no, of suspended you're just there. Floating. Yeah. So they're in the black Jello. <laughs> I thought the lighting underneath there was really cool too because the people are like completely blue. It just uh, it just looked really cool. So he sees the other man from earlier who now looks all crazy. His skin's all loose. Like he's been in the jello for a little too long. <laughs> We've all been in the jello a little too long before. <laughs> they briefly touch hands before that man's entire guts get sucked out or something. Hard to know uh, like what's yep. actually going on here. But I did love that... Uh, so all his guts get sucked out at once, and his skin is just left um, <laughs> like floating around like the bag from American Beauty. <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 it's beautiful. <laughs> like a child trying to get me to play. <laughs> Whatever that line yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, this was nasty. It was nasty, but it was so sick. Uh, like in yeah, the good way. It was, it was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was sick in both ways. Yeah. Sick and deranged, but also sick and badass. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah, I just loved that that imagery of that skin floating around. I don't know why I thought that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it grossed me out a lot. Yeah, you get grossed out it's at gross. everything though. Uh no, just relax. You get grossed out a lot easier than I do, I would absolutely say. <laughs> All right. We should have a gross out sometime. <laughs> So after the whole skin floating around, there's just like some random imagery where like Willy Wonka tunneling. There's like guts on a conveyor belt and then just like some random red stuff. <laughs> Are we doing this movie justice? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just like more jello. Red stuff with vibes. Yeah, it's it's a uh, red vibes. <laughs> yeah, you got some red vibes. You got some black vibes. You got some white vibes. So we don't exactly know like what is going on because maybe his guts are like floating on a conveyor belt to something i don't know who knows it's up for interpretation it's like conveyor belt sushi for aliens <laughs> yeah that makes sense yeah you're the doctor here yeah yeah i mean that is my <laughs> opinion as a scientist <laughs> <laughs> so she's in the van. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's a guy in the street selling roses. And somebody in a van across the way buys her a rose. Handsome lad. Do they say lads in, in Scotland? They do. Okay. Lads and lassies. Wait, have you been to Scotland? I have. <gasps> <laughs> How was it? I've heard Great. It's... I didn't get in any strange vans. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, then you no, haven't it's, really it's been wonderful. to Scotland. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't. You haven't lived or died until you've gotten a strange van and tried to show your wiener to Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> A goals. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I've never been anywhere cool. You've been everywhere. Have you been everywhere? <laughs> I, I haven't been everywhere, but I've been a lot of places. Pre-pandemic, astronomers tend to travel a lot, and yeah. that is kind of something that I like about the job. It can get a little overwhelming. I think we actually like travel maybe a little bit too much. Yeah. Um, sure. But I have gotten to go to Scotland a couple times for work, and it's great. Scots are delightful people. <laughs> Part of being an astronomer is knowing about planets, and therefore you got to see the whole planet to know what's going on, right? <laughs> yeah, you got to look at the Bingo. top and the bottom and all the sides. <laughs> I think that's how that works. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm jealous. So when she gets the rose, the man's blood's all over it. I love it. Thanks, guy. <laughs> Handing me a handful of your blood. But He's just trying can, his best. You can see that uh, she doesn't bleed, even though she's also holding the rose. She makes no blood. Yeah, I also think the scene is significant because this is one of the first times that Scarlett Johansson really sees kindness in humanity uh mm, pretty much yeah. everything else she's seen is has been like debaucherous lustful and rowdy and uh, nasty nasty <laughs> so when she sees this guy handing out roses even though and it shows him putting bandages on his hands and everything even though he's like pricking himself he's trying to do this kind thing for everyone of giving people flowers yeah and she pauses just a little bit and like of course like 
all of this is just fucking interpretation. Mm -hmm. But this is like the seeds being planted for a major change uh, in her character. Sure. I didn't think about that, but you're right. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. (laughs) Ding, ding. There's like a little, just a small scene where the biker guy uh, is like closely inspecting her. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. She's just like standing there and he gets all up in her face and is just kind of eyeballing her, walking around her. I feel like that moment you kind of get that he like hates her a little bit or something. I feel like he looks like he's kind of like inspecting her to make sure that she's still intact. Yeah. He's just very like mission focused. He's got boss energy at this moment. Yeah. Maybe also worried that she's going to turn like the first girl did and uh, Mm. and ruin the mission again. Yeah, that seems like a solid interpretation of that, I think. Yeah. Next, she's walking down the street when she does the trip and fall. And apparently at the time of filming this, because everything was filmed with hidden cameras, that trip and fall was like caught by paparazzi or something and and memed a whole bunch. (laughs) People thought Scarlett Johansson just fell. (laughs) Oh, brutal. (laughs) Because they didn't know it was part of a movie. That's kind of funny, I think. (laughs) It definitely makes me want to go look for the meme. I know, I haven't looked for them, and I should, but I just read that. (laughs) And yeah, while she's out, what is she, like, shopping or something? She's doing, like, a whole bunch of people watching. There's, like, long scenes at this time of just people watching of all types, not just men. Now it's, like, all Mm -hmm. kinds of people. She's seen humanity. Yeah. I sort of watched this and thought it was only women. In this specific, like, part of the movie, you mean? Yeah, there's kind of, like, this um, long scene of it's possible there were some men in there, but it seemed like everybody who was in focus was only the women. I think you might be right. I didn't, like, quantify it or anything, but I did notice that there were a lot of women, so it probably is all women. Yeah, I thought it was only women. Yeah. But so y'all are right. She's watching girls now. I sort of like watched the scene and I was like, I didn't at first interpret it as her like people watching so much as like having a really dry day on the hunt, you know, <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> like being like, man, this whole place is full of women. <laughs> oh, okay. I straight up thought that she was going to just start hunting women and start seducing them. <laughs> Could have been cool. But uh, yeah. That's yeah, a except bummed. women would have maced her immediately. And yeah. get, like, get in your <laughs> van, true. no. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's not as believable. Yeah, true. So around here, we're about 48 minutes into the movie. The music cuts out completely and stays away for 40 minutes. There's no music. It's just basically dead silence and outdoor noises or like distant people talking or stuff like that. Just whatever noise would be around her wherever she is. Mm -hmm. Kind of a wild choice, I think. For 40 minutes, there's no music at all. Yeah, It's very like visceral. I don't know. You really feel the environment at that time, I think. Yeah. We get the boys trying to rob the van, which was kind of scary. Yeah, that was nuts. Yeah. How did they not break the van? They appeared out of... Yeah. They appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. And there were like six of them. And they were like shaking her window, trying to break it and everything. That was scary. Yeah, I was going to say, not to boast, but I feel like most people, including me and mostly me, could elbow through like a car window. It was kind of high though because it's a big old van. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I watched this and I was like, um, you know, much like earlier in the movie where I was like, wow, men really don't have any defenses Uh i this was the moment where i was like oh and neither does scarlett johansson because she's an alien and she has no idea that she's in danger because of like Mm. her weird flesh suit yeah sure you know because i feel like most i don't know like i lived in baltimore for seven years and like people coming up to your car if you're like in an area where that might happen and you're at a stoplight and people attacking your car is like not super unusual and obviously that that happens in chicago and stuff too Mm -hmm. i personally am like on the lookout for stuff like that if i'm driving around by myself late at night yeah and she seems so like her facial expression was so um like flummoxed yeah that it was happening i'd be curious to know if those were just like real kids or if those were Mm. like neighborhood kids that were asked to act and like attack the van probably sure. the second thing right i think so truly who knows i mean <laughs> would be a wild thing to like <laughs> randomly catch i guess no but like you're totally right this definitely more informs the alien yeah like that it, it definitely is an alien and 
Not at all a robot, Colin. Um, <laughs> I mean, that it, was my point, Colin. That's a really good point, though, about how she wouldn't know that because she's exactly. she's been using her flesh suit as power, like to give herself power over yeah. the men, but she doesn't realize yeah. that when she's outnumbered, or even realize what there are is this attacking? What is? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Because yeah. at this, up to this point, we really only understand her to just be on a singular mission. Yeah. She does not do anything other than hunt. Mm-hmm. So, but this is the first time that she actively has to do something that she's not programmed to do, which is react, or I not programmed, sorry, not like, <laughs> she's not, uh, a robot. not accustomed to, <laughs> not a robot, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so next she goes to pick up the man with the facial deformity. Yeah. And this man was an actual actor. His name's Adam Pearson. And that is his actual face, which I thought was yeah. cool that they did actually employ a person with the disability instead of creating one. Totally. I watched an interview of his last night. He seems real cool. Yeah. He actually does advocacy work to stop bullying associated with deformities. So oh, that's great. Cool casting. He has yeah. neurofibromatosis. Also fun, fun story. Uh, fun? I don't know. That's a bad adjective. But he broke his leg because <laughs> he was hit by a car on his way to audition for the role. And, uh, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> oh. not a fun fact. It Yay. actually devastated no. me. Um, <laughs> but Glazer auditioned him in the hospital the next day <laughs> and gave him the job. Wild fact, yeah, maybe. Absolutely. With <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, she picks up this man, and this scene was devastating, I think. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Everything involving this character is devastating. Yeah. My heart was just like sinking and sinking, like the longer yeah. it went on. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like many of the scenes of this movie, um, with the exception of when like the guy's guts get suck out, uh-huh. most of the movie you sit and watch, you're like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a low scream. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the guts getting sucked out is definitely all like, that. Um, but this <laughs> this scene, I, I felt like that in particular, that sort of like building where you're like, oh, no, 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 yes. no. This yeah. is terrible. Very Same bad. with the beach scene. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. The like dread. Yeah. And it, I think it's interesting for a movie with like so, really so little like going on and so much left up to like vibes and visuals and interpretations that even with that being true, that they can still make you feel so much, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. is is really cool. Hard to agree. Yeah. Yeah, so she has to, like, basically con this man into desiring her because at first he's pretty, like, standoffish. He'll, he'll barely even look at her. And mm-hmm. apparently the actor contributed the ideas of the specific ways that she could seduce his character or someone like him, and they were added oh. to the script. So I think that's kind of cool, that's too. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that rules. Yeah. So she's, like, complimenting his hands. She takes his hands and, like, touches her face and neck. So it's, like, it's not like she's just, like, hey, put your hand on my weenie or, you know, whatever. Like, <laughs> 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 she's really, like, she's going soft with him, you know? Touch my cheek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and also because, like, he's the only one of the men that has any, like, vulnerability that would be guarded against her, you know? Because, yeah. like, he obviously is suspicious of her to begin with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rightfully so. Yeah. <laughs> I might Absolutely. Add. Yeah. And he's the only one who's gotten in the car and and not just been like, all right, let's do this. My bone's already up, you know? <laughs> like- <laughs> 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 so yeah, he's more of a challenge for her. Oh, yeah. Just devastating. So she does end up taking him to her house or to a house it seems like she's using a different house every time that are all just like abandoned houses the one that they go into this time is like all wet and like the wallpaper is falling off and it's just water dripping everywhere she's just got like a pop-up void that she could set up anywhere yeah i mean yeah it's when you try and think about like what is the void it breaks my brain i don't know how does it work there's always room for jello yeah Yeah, oh, it's interesting. You're like, where are they going when they go in the jello? Like, I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, 
I don't think I want to know, really. I just want it to be what it is, but yeah. trying to think about what it is, it's complicated. I don't know. Yeah. This time, though, when she takes him into the, he gets in the water, blah, blah, there's a black alien watching them. And I think that's the first time that there's been a black alien watching, right? I think so, yeah. 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 So I don't know who that is. Is it the biker guy? I don't know. But after she, <sighs> after this man gets in the jello, she goes downstairs and looks in the mirror for a long time, soul yeah. searching. <laughs> And uh, I guess pulls the boy out of the jello because next thing you know, he's running out of the house naked into the swamp. Oh, yeah. Walking across the moors as one does in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. In, in, the, in the buff. Naked. <laughs> in the interview I watched of him, he said that he had to shoot that at 4 a.m. in Scotland. And it was super cold. And his feet got all cut up. Aww. Fella. He wanted you to Aww. know it was cold so you wouldn't judge when you saw his little weenie. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so he goes running away, but the biker ends up going after him and grabs him and puts him in the trunk of a car that he steals. For some reason, I just assumed the guy was like, at that was his house for some reason. That's not at all confirmed. That was just a dumb assumption I made. That it was the, boy, but I, the boy's house? Yeah. I thought it was his house. Did you? I also yeah. kind of felt like it was his house. Maybe because he was coming okay. in through the backyard. You. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh, thank God. I'm well, not the They just don't really one. say. It feels like it's probably his house, but they don't like say it is or it isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's what is partly what makes that moment so terrible is that like he made it and yeah. then, you know, like John Claude Van Damme motorcycle guy just, is just like, nope, now you go in the trunk. Done. Yeah. Now you're done. Yeah. Just devastating. You want the man to live. He seems like a nice boy. Yeah. You want him to have sex too. <laughs> the old lady yeah. neighbor across the street also sees him get put into the trunk, but we get no consequences from that. He just stares right back. <laughs> yeah. I cuz I was like this is it. Finally, we're going to get some payoff yeah. to this. Well, when I was watching, I was like, this corporation is going to pay. Can you believe uh, an old white woman did not call the cops? <laughs> call the right? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Just like you fuck that one weird boy. job. <laughs> Gertrude's gonna take that corporation down. <laughs> she said, "A cab, <laughs> bye." <laughs> yep. So next, Scarjo's back in the van, and she finally runs out of gas after driving for approximately six days straight, <laughs> and she breaks down in yeah. a dense fog. The densest fog I've ever seen. You like can't even see your hand in front of your face. And then walks to a restaurant and orders some cake. And she spends like five minutes trying to convince herself to take a bite of this cake. And I think her interaction with the boy has made her want to try being a human or something. That's what I took it as. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I took it as like, all right, my motorcycle boss manager whatever is going to be really mad at me so i might as well try some human things like eating a piece of cake and truly this is the worst part of being an alien i would say that you can't eat cake. aside from the <laughs> yeah aside from the murdery oh, parts <laughs> you can only eat human guts and no cake <laughs> no cake <laughs> and then when she finally does take a bite she chokes and spits it out instantly <laughs> makes a scene at scottish applebee's yeah <laughs> Her car's broke down. She can't eat cake. She doesn't know what to do. She's lost in the world. So she gets on the bus. There's a man on the bus who asks her if she needs help. She says yes, so he takes her home. A nice and man. also a very endearing bus driver. I loved the who bus driver. very worried that she doesn't have a jacket, which I love. Yeah. yeah, he was worried she didn't have a jacket. And then when the other guy came over and is like bothering her, he's like, Hey, leave leave the girl alone. Like she doesn't want to talk yeah. to you, which is also yeah, solid oh, yeah. bus driver. Yeah, bus driver rocks. So she goes back to this man's house. He sets her up with the whole room and pieces out. He's nice. He's a gentleman yeah. at first, at least. I was like, oh hell yeah, like a good guy. Because I was immediately thinking it's gonna go south. This is gonna get it's gonna get bad real fast. Yeah, but. No, he, like, gives her space, uh -huh. doesn't fucking bother her. Yeah, there's, like, a space heater and, it, like, a, you know, pretty comfy-looking bed. Yeah. I would he love leaves. to get put up in that. Yeah. <laughs> I did also really enjoy her character's reaction because, like, imagine being a creature that doesn't have the concept oh of sleep 
And then yeah. somebody puts you in a room like that and is just like, okay, bye. Yeah. You just stood there. <laughs> and so she just yeah. stands against the wall. She stands in the mirror for a long time looking at mm. her naked body too. Yeah, I mean, it's just another step. Like you realize she probably hasn't looked at this thing that much. She hasn't looked it in the um, eyes. <laughs> no, she never. She looked- hasn't looked a bunch of places as I think yeah. we'll talk about yeah. in a moment. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was sent down with this little skin suit, had to jump right into those clothes, and boom, 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 she's been on the run. So She's been busy. Yeah, yeah so she hasn't had time to really uh, give this thing a once-over. So next day, they go to a weird castle together. She tries stairs for the first time. <laughs> she's afraid of the stairs. He helps her down the stairs. He's nice. I guess there are three motorcycle guys who are looking for her. Now, because she's, she's officially missing. She's left her yeah. post-van life. She let a guy go. And then she did ditch the van, and she doesn't have a cell phone. She hasn't returned her work ID. Yeah. Clocked out. <laughs> <laughs> I never clocked that there were three different motorcycle guys. I thought it was all just the one guy. I, uh, but I, I also know. thought that. I think this is just the first time we see two others. How I read this initially is that they sent out oh they sent out two more guys because it's a serious thing yeah i always just thought it was the one guy but apparently it was three everything i read said oh when the three motorcycle guys go out like okay i guess it's three yeah i (laughs) totally i've watched the movie twice and i thought it was just the one dude yeah good at least i'm not a dummy or we both are no well you're definitely not so (laughs) i'll trust you So finally, her and the guy get back to the house and they do a kiss. And when they do a kiss, that's when the music finally kicks back in after all this long time of silence. Mm -hmm. Then we get the sweet song. They do kissing and then they try to do sex, but it's not happening, it seems. She freaks out when she realizes what's going on down there. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Also a top tier scene of this movie where she flies off the bed and grabs a lamp to look at her own vagina. (laughs) Uh, totally understandable reaction. And then throws yeah. the lamp, by the way, afterwards, which is a second tier of that. I mean, who among us has not discovered a new pocket that we didn't know our coat had <laughs> oh, after oh, 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 a long time of, of wearing it? And... <laughs> uh, like, wow, <laughs> never knew this was here. Uh, what the hell? And those things are tricky. I mean, they'll get you. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) Even most people who have had education on what's going on down there still don't know. You know what I mean? (laughs) This is, that's a fact. (laughs) This chick's just thrown into it. Like, she's got to be totally surprised. (laughs) So she has to look her vagina in the eyes and uh, is traumatized by what she sees, I guess. Because then she just stands up and stares at the wall. Oh Which must be very perplexing for this gentle Scott yeah, <laughs> as well. But he's nice. He's just like, oh, it wasn't working, I guess. <laughs> uh, that's kind of the look on his face. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. this is not really happen. read the room. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to stare at the wall now? Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here before. <laughs> The next scene, she's like running into the forest and she passes by the man in the woods who's played by the owner of a location researched for the film. So he's just a regular old man. (laughs) So just a guy, yeah. Just a guy. (laughs) Classic guy. I don't know. He seems sus. He's in the woods and he does all that. Oh, it's a big woods out here. 2,000 acres. Basically saying no one will hear you scream. (laughs) Yeah, just like really sends up a flare of like it's danger it, yeah it's danger harm time yeah <laughs> yes yeah for sure and so she does go walking for a little bit she finds a little cabin thing it says hill walkers are welcome to take shelter here which was nice she goes in there and goes to sleep for the first time yeah yeah so maybe she is becoming human and when she wakes up though that man is of course back because he's a danger boy Trigger warning. Next scene is assault. I'll put the timestamp in the notes. Okay. So she's sleeping for the first time. She wakes up. The man is touching on her and being a nasty uh, man. He's assaulting her, basically. Yeah. And she kicks him and runs off. There's a chase. It's very scary. She can't start the log truck. As we said, there's... just terribly upsetting scene. Yeah. Yes. Just she's in danger and you know she's going to get going to get got. We have no point of reference for these aliens 
physical power. Yeah, we don't know her strength. And she's yeah. never had to use it, probably. Yeah. I wish we had some scenes of her pumping iron, but we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't part of the mission. It should have been. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, she doesn't need physical strength, right? Because she just has this, like, alluring body and just has to walk across a pool. Slowly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and these men just sort of willingly are just like might drown, might get to bone Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, yeah, and so she's never had to do anything, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, what a gig! <laughs> I know. <laughs> Gold. <Goals>. Truly, <laughs> the man does catch her, uh, and then there's a pretty long scene of him trying to get the positioning to rape her. It's not working out, and she's fighting, and eventually he rips her skin. So that's the end of the rape part, I guess. <laughs> yeah. She has to take off her skin now. The man sees that her skin has been ripped and just sees black. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, blood, blood and guts and stuff. And um, freaks out. Yeah. Yeah, and like runs the fuck away. And I was like, You were like, oh, good, he's gone. <laughs> she She's good uh, now. Haha. <laughs> yeah, everything is... <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Happy ending. <laughs> so she unzips her skin clothes and looks her face in the eyes. <laughs> oh, who's coming up? Oh, it's the man again and throws gasoline all over her and lights her on fire. Uh. And she takes off running. It's snow now suddenly. I don't think it was snow before, was it? I think it was kind of snowy, but she's in the forest, right? And it's really dense. Yeah. So there's no... Mm-hmm. And she kind of runs out into the clearing. Yeah. So she runs out into the snow and burns to death, basically. And you see her yeah. her body ashes falling back down to the ground. And the biker guy is still looking for her. Maybe sees her smoke signal. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. And roll creds. <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> Devastating ending. <laughs> I think Glazer's presentation of humanity is just so fucking jarring. It's, it's a fucking train wreck in a good way or f- car wreck I mean uh, in that like you you don't want to watch a lot of this because it's a lot of it is like very fucking intense like if it's not long shots of Scarlett Johansson then dead dog dead woman dead man dead man dead baby like in it's it's abhorrent it's brutal yeah I feel like this movie actually does a pretty good job of depicting humans just as like the animals we are because yeah. not everybody in the movie is bad, right? Like yeah. that scene on the beach is like partly devastating because it is like person after person trying to save someone else. Uh-huh. Yeah. And like, like definitely most of the movie, like all of the characters who are humans are kind of like lustful, but they're not bad necessarily. They're just sure, kind of sure. stupid and, you know, just want to fuck. They're not being <laughs> intentionally like, you know, malicious. I think there's yeah. anything wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, and that, you're right. That's not yeah. bad. You're right. Well, and also, right. like, this horrible dude in the woods, you could argue did something that is kind of good for humanity. <laughs> like, oh, without a doubt. Because, eh, but he doesn't have that context. He's just a horrible dude in the woods. Yeah. But he may also have prevented an alien invasion and at the same time is an evil rapist. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, I think it presents us as like very complicated and that I I think feels really true. I mean, if the, if the oh, movie has... <laughs> has a moral at all to me it is that it is safer to strain men for their chemicals than it is to try and take them <laughs> which also feels true to hell me. yeah hell yeah <laughs> i wasn't i don't know i didn't think too hard about what it has to say about humanity i guess personally what I really liked about this movie was the the slowness of it all, of just like, mm. I like a movie, I'm getting more into these kind of movies here lately, that just makes a little mm-hmm. world that you can just step into and like live along with for a while, you know? Uh, that it's not yeah. like just boom, 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 all these things happening, like... A lot of times you're just sitting with her while she's driving or walking with her in the woods or like whatever you're doing. Yeah, just like I like the slower pacing. I like that uh, there's not a ton of things going on, but everything's still really 
beautiful and interesting and makes you just stop and like be present with her instead of thinking too much about everything yeah that's yeah, what i, I like <laughs> I, I think viewing it alone mm-hmm. and viewing it with i mean Lindsay and i talk through movies yeah we're process we process it together so like i'm actively poking and prodding sometimes whereas yeah watching this movie alone is a very Dude, it's just different. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. Uh, you get such a different vibe mm. with it. Wild. This movie rocks. <laughs> yeah. I love an atmospheric horror or sci-fi movie. Oh, For totally. Sure. Yum. Yum, yum. <laughs> yeah, and one that invents its own kind of world and situation, too, that's not just, like, something you've seen a hundred times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this movie is, I mean, incredibly unique. Yeah. Like, it just, there's nothing else like it, which I think is, you know, really saying something because there's a lot of there's a lot of alien movies and a lot of alien trips that have been done and boy they are not here <laughs> not in this movie no <laughs> yeah for sure yeah i read a, a little piece from this website called the cinemaholic where he said not only the timeline is non-linear at many points but we don't know who the alien is or was she spoke less than all the other characters combined but even despite all that We take away an experience with us, which we haven't experienced so far and which we probably won't for some time to come. I thought that was kind of a cool quote. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 I feel like that sums up this movie pretty well. It's all vibes. All right. So we've rolled creds. We've said our parts. Uh, It's time to score the movie out of five. So what are we thinking? This movie gets a solid four from me. Okay. There's a lot I love about this movie. Yeah. Especially when you combine it with Jonathan Glazer losing 10 years of his life to this. (laughs) Just like (laughs) losing his whole mind for this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. And potentially losing the rest of his life for this movie. (laughs) It gave me this, di- you know, I respect that shit. Yeah. I, I love it. It's not healthy. It's not good, but it's wild. But, you know, it doesn't get a full five from me because I didn't love every second I was watching this movie. Mm-hmm. It's a movie that is abrasive uh, and hard to watch. And for that reason, it's not perfect, but it's very fucking good. All right. Lulu, what do you think? I love a abrasive, hard to watch movie that ruins its creator. <laughs> <laughs> I truly like all of my favorite movies are like absolutely soul ruining movies. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, It's an almost five just because it's I I think like there are things about it that, you know, I little moments that I find kind of silly that kind of take me out of it. Like the thing with the clothes at the beginning always gets me. Um, sandstorm. but yeah, yes. Right. Like there's, there's little tiny things like that, that kind of take me out of it. Yeah. But on the whole, the movie is so unusual. It really is not like anything else and totally. has this incredible emotional impact for something that doesn't really have very much going on. And, you know, like that, plus like the score I really love. It's an almost perfect movie to me, I think. Close, as about as close to perfect as I, I could want. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. I'm torn on what I think this movie should be rated. I really did enjoy my viewing experience. I'm getting so into a movie that is slow as fuck, fucked up. You almost have to do research to understand anything that's going on. <laughs> it completely turns your brains to mashed potatoes or slash maybe makes me smarter. I'm getting really into these kind of movies. So I did enjoy my viewing experience. I do agree there was just a couple things about the movie that took me out or maybe took it down a little notch. I don't know. So I think I'm going to go three and a half. How about that? Hell yeah. Nice little nice little slope. Yeah. And it's safe to say we would recommend this movie. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, for okay. sure. Watch yeah. this shit. It's Absolutely. so good. I feel like even if you hate it, it's, it's worth watching. It's worth watching. Yeah. yeah. You'll take something yeah. away. Now it's time for Screen Vomit. This part of the podcast, we do a quick romp on whatever else we've been watching. Movies, TV, whatever else. Kali, what you been watching? I started my freaking Criterion Challenge, baby. What's that? I mean, I know what Criterion is, but what's your challenge? Uh, I'm watching one film from the Criterion Collection 
every week. Oh. There was like a format blueprint. What are you fill in the blanks? It's like pick a movie from 1984. Pick a movie directed by Akira Kurosawa. Pick a film. Oh, okay, you have like a bingo's card. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then you you pick movies. That <laughs> Your fill in Criterion the bingo. So, nice. I, first week I chose Secret Honor from 1984, uh, directed by Robert Altman and starring. Philip Baker Hall. It's just a one man show, basically. It's a fictionalized account of Richard Nixon recording his memoirs. Oh, wow. And it's basically just 90 minutes straight of this dude doing the <laughs> thing. Uh, but like. He's not a crook. It, no. It's so good. He never said, I'm not a crook, or like went that hammy with it. Uh, it really is an outstanding performance, and it is also, it's kind of boring. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Fucking history. What the, who gives a shit? You know what I'm saying? President. No, thank you. I watched uh, Popstar. Never stop the Andy Samberg one. Yeah. Popstar is great. I watched, oh, We Need to Talk About Kevin. Oh, with, oh love I just that added movie. that to my list. I haven't watched it. Oh, Tilda Swinton and John C. Riley. It's nuts. Yeah. It's great. Fucking absolutely check it out. Hell yeah. I adore that movie. It yeah. is so good. And then I watched, ugh. I used to go here. All right. I got beef. Oh, you got to pop off? (laughs) This is, I got to pop off about freaking, not specifically, I believe it's pronounced Gillian Jacobs. I fucking hate it. She's in all these fucking (laughs) movies and shit where she's in goddamn college and community aside, they fucking suck. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this. And I, and Lindsay keeps making me watch them and I hate them. I'm so sick of watching Gillian Jacobs in movies in college. I, I don't like it. I want it to stop. Anyway, that's what I watched this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lucien, what you been watching? Anything? Yeah. Um, so I watch almost exclusively horror movies. Hell yeah. Um, Hell that's kind of yeah. like what I reach for. So sure. I've watched a couple good ones lately. Um, I watched Anything for Jackson huh. and His House. And they're both. I heard uh, His House oh. is really good. Yeah. They're, I'm they're stoked to watch it. Very different movies, but both like weirdly um, horror movies about grief in the same way that like if you've seen The Babadook, mm-hmm. um, you know. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The Babadook is sort of like a horror movie, but really about grief. And anything for Jackson is on Shudder. And it, it's these grandparents that have lost their grandchild and decide to perform an exorcism. And I don't want to tell you too much about it, but it's definitely, I thought, a fun watch. Definitely like unusual in that like, I feel like there's lots of, there's lots of like, somebody died and we're going to have a exorcism slash like reincarnation thing but i i found it kind of fresh um and his house is great it's about sudanese refugees and you know like the embodied horror of the things that they have been through and their experience in the immigration system and like the horror of that too and that is a far better movie than (laughs) than anything for jackson has like a much deeper like political commentary but both are worth watching i thought i also recently watched black bear which is this that's on our list yeah i want to watch it so bad i love black bear (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> I've heard it's so good. Um, yeah, it's really bonkers. It is like a kind of a movie about marriage made by married people. And afterwards, like uh, Frank and I watched it together and Frank was like, I can't imagine being a married couple that would make this movie about marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave you with that. <laughs> Jesus. And then besides those, I've watched a bunch of like Korean horror movies as well. Oh, the Call, sick. Forgotten. Yeah, I watch a lot of movies. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell How about yeah. you? Yeah, I've been on a real movies kick. So I watched Suburbia, the 1996 one, because there oh, are yeah. two movies. Yeah, this yeah, title. yeah. So I watched the 1996 one with Parker Posey and Steve Zahn. It was really good. It was a little too relatable. <laughs> it gave me a little PTSD to my teen years, but it was really good. And I watched 20th Century Women that has uh, Annette Bening, who was in one of our recent movies that we covered on pod and Greta Gerwig stars in it. That was like a really good, like, I don't know. It's a, about a mom and her son's journey. Kind of, it's kind of corny, but it's very good. And I watched scream four with a friend of the pod, Mary, the best scream. That's insane. <laughs> I have to watch it again to challenge you on that. That can't be right. It's the best scream. So we, we've watched through all of the screams in the last month. Wow. So my definitive ranking is Scream 4 is the best. 
Scream 2 is the second best. Scream Original is the third best. Scream 3 is bad and nobody should ever watch it. It should be scrubbed. (laughs) Yeah, no, Scream 3 is very bad. Other than Parker Posey. I Parker know. Posey in Scream 3 rocks I know. Par- so hard. I, Parker got screwed on being in 3, uh, and so did uh, What's-Her-Head's Bangs, Courtney Cox's Bangs in Scream 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <insane>. they suck. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, I watched a bad movie called Margaret that has oh, yeah. uh, has Anna Paquin, Mark Ruffalo, Matt Damon. Got all these big guys in it, and the acting is really good, but it's like three hours long, and... <laughs> It's like a pointless movie. Three hours of Anna Paquin trying to get Mark Ruffalo arrested for a car accident that she caused. (laughs) Desperately trying to get the police to arrest him. Is it just punctuated by somebody going, Margaret, every time she tries? (laughs) The thing is, her name isn't even Margaret. (laughs) Margaret is the... Wait, (laughs) who? Margaret is like a poem that's read at some point in the movie by... What's that guy's name? The Ferris Bueller guy. What's his name? Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Matthew Broderick's in this as well. And he's a teacher at her high school. And he reads this poem about Margaret. So Margaret isn't even her name. And it's like barely even... The poem does not... It's worded in such a way. It doesn't why? have like significance to anything. I don't understand why it's called oh, Margaret. Oh, good. So- <laughs> why, why TF did you watch it? <laughs> I watched it because I knew all these people were in it. And somebody... I saw it in the Facebook group. The... <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. <laughs> and I like all these people a lot, you know? Yeah, totally. And I'm just like a little um, freak that like once I start watching something, I'll finish it even if I'm having a terrible time and it's three hours long. <laughs> oh, and it has, yeah, no, it has like a 3.8 on Letterboxd. Yeah, like, it has yeah, a good like... score, but it's a bad movie. Oh, wow. So I don't know. I, huh. I don't know what the deal is there. The movie's pointless in my opinion. But it, it is like really well acted. Like the actors are great. The the story is what sucks. Sure, so sure. I guess I can see where okay. people would give it higher marks because the people in it do a really good job. Sure. The story doesn't make sense. It's boring to watch. Yeah. Anyway, Margaret sucks. Don't watch Margaret. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. I've, the last couple episodes, the last thing that I've said is always the bad thing. And then I'm just like, all right, I guess it's time to move on. Oh, <laughs> well, it's over. <laughs> but, uh, but that's the bad one. And now it's time for plugs. <laughs> So, Lucian, do you have anything to plug or tell people where they can find you online, etc.? Yeah, um, I would say if you are interested in things like space and social justice and stuff that I work on, I have a newsletter that is not not rocket science.substack.com. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram as Rocket to Lulu. And also um, check out the WOW Signal, which is on the Adler Planetarium's YouTube channel, because we will have a new episode out in about a month, and there are two you can watch already. Hell yeah. You can also still find Ditch Club music on Bandcamp, right? Yes, you can. Hell yeah. (laughs) Uh, Okay, you can follow us on Instagram and everywhere else, at Screen Vomit, one word on all the things. Uh, We're also on YouTube. Now, I haven't mentioned that in a while. Same shit, different platform. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. Help share the podcast. I don't know if you like it, whatever. Send us an email at screenmomentpod at gmail.com. You can tweet us with your thoughts on this movie, on other movies, suggest movies. Check out Kali's other podcast, How to Fire Your Boss. I don't know what we're watching next week. Sorry. That's all our plugs. Thanks, Lucianne, for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Great. uh, Thanks for this great excuse to rewatch this movie. Hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.